Now let's get hands on and actually do this for real with a real issue on a real module. So I'm going to be doing this on a virtual machine, which I have here. And as we said, if we're going to be working on a module, the usual way is to clone it to the desktop modules folder of a local DNN website. So we need to install a website. Uh, if you want to do these things quickly, you can use nvquick um, to install the websites. I think it's nvquick site, and if I'm not mistaken, um, which is great, it's okay. But I want to show you the, the the manual way of doing it. We need to go get the latest stable version because we're working on a module, we're not working on actual DNN itself. So we're gonna go to github.com and we're gonna go in the DNN software organization. We're gonna go to DNN platform and releases and we're gonna grab the latest stable release install package. Okay, we don't need the source for that uh, unless we're going to be working on this. Right now this demo is working on a module. The site is only there to provide us with the, 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 the an actual website where the module can run and we can see it working. And you can use this website installation for all of your modules. So the file is downloaded. I'm gonna just open it here step one step two we need to create a folder to hold that and we want to avoid having long folder paths so try to make that that doesn't want to snap try to make that um, something short where you're going to install the nn so what i usually have is directly on, on a drive, C or D or whatever, I'm gonna make a folder here called DNN. That's gonna have all my DNN sites that are local in here. And in that folder, I'm gonna make a folder called modules. And that will be my local DNN website for working on modules. You can do it another way, it's just, just showing the way I do it, because I'm going to have three running websites for this. So we want to copy all these files into that folder, and while the system is doing that, we're going to create a database for it. So you can use your normal Windows authentication or whatever whatever authentication you set up while you installed SQL Server. There we go. And now in databases, currently we have only the system databases. We want to add one by right clicking, new database. And you want to give that a descriptive name. I'm going to call it DNN modules because this one will be for my website dedicated to modules development. You can leave all the standard default options here and we're good. If you want to have independent logins, you can go into security, create your logins. For local development, I just going to use whatever we set up in um, in the, um, the installation of SQL Server and I'm gonna use that as a login and password so all the sites will be using the same login but you can totally go with independent logins then the files are now copied we need to make that a website by going into IIS gonna expand the sites and you're gonna see here default website which is a blank Windows provided website we want to create a new one so we're gonna right click on sites add website and I'm gonna call this one modules.localtest.me you can name that whatever you want but if it ends with localtest.me that was registered on the public internet to point to your own machine 
127.0.1 IP address. That's a good thing because this way I don't have to go edit my host file. But if you want to name this something else, uh, you can go in the host file and point that name back to your own machine. And I'm going to use the same site name as the host name, the URL that you're going to type in to access that. Uh, for what we're doing here, we don't need HTTPS or SSL, so I'm going to leave it as is. And the physical path will be C, DNN, and modules. So that's my website dedicated for modules. That's going to be my root directory. This is good. Now the next important thing is that the process that runs the website, which is the, the worker process, needs to have full control over that directory in order to be able to read and write files to that. Uh, you're going to right click, go to properties, security, and if you left everything at the defaults, uh, the user account used for that, I'm going to click here on edit, add, and you're going to search for IIS space app pool backslash and the name that we put for the website. So it was modules.localtest.me. And you should have a user here, which is kind of a virtual user. This user does not have a Windows account, it's just how IIS presents that to Windows as a user. So that user you want to allow full control. Gonna hit OK, it can, may take a couple seconds to update the permissions and we should be good to go. Now we can close a few things because that machine is not super fast. Now we're just going to navigate to that website, modules.localtest.me. And by the way, you're going to do these steps here just for the first module. So the next two, three, four modules you're going to be working on, the, the, everything will be already set up for that. So during DNN installation, you're going to be asked for a username. On a production machine, I would avoid using host, make that something a bit more complicated. You're going to select, here it's a weak password, but you would select something better than that. Uh, for what we're doing, we don't need a valid email address. I can leave it like this, I can leave it everything to default. And the database setup, it's not going to use the default. The default is a file database. It works, but there's some SQL tools you cannot use with that. So you better go with the full SQL server. Uh, and it's not an SQL Server Express file, it's an actual database. So we want to select this radio button. And the server name is whatever appears when you open up um, SQL Server Management Studio. And this dialog, so we want to copy this and put it in the server name here. The database name is the database we created. So it's going to be DNN modules. Going to copy that and put it here. Object qualifier, you never want to use that into production if you don't have to because not all modules have been properly tested to support that feature. What this does is if you're on a cheap hosting environment where they offer you only one one database for the, the, the package that you're paying for, but you want to be able to have multiple DNN instances on that hosting account, then you can add an object qualifier and that's basically a little string that's appended at the beginning of every table, every SQL object to differentiate your different DNN instances on that same database. F now we have our own, so we don't need that feature, but I'm putting it because we're going to be working on modules. So if we work on a module that does not support that, we want to fix that for other people. So I usually just use OQ for object qualifier. And the security, I'm not going to use integrated, I'm going to use user-defined 
and the login SA and the password you used when you set up your SQL server. Or you could use a specific user account if you have created one for that. We're going to run the database as the database owner, that's fine. You can select here if you want to share um, data with DNN about DNN usage. I usually leave it ticked, but it's your choice. And the DNN installation will start, and that's going to take 2-3 minutes. And it took exactly two minutes here. Uh, that's going to depend on your machine. It could be a little slower, a little faster. Uh, you always want to check the logs just in case if there is anything here that might point us in the direction if there was any problem during installation. And we're going to click Visit Website. The website is going to restart, so that's going to take another few seconds. During that time, I'm going to go into Visual Studio and continue where we left off. We were cloning. Uh, so basically in the Team Explorer uh, panel, this is where you're going to have your access to different uh, team services. GitHub is one of them, but there's Visual Studio Team Services and others. In our case, it's GitHub. We never connected to GitHub in Visual Studio, so for the first time, you're going to have to connect. If you don't see Team Explorer, you need to go into the view menu and select Team Explorer. So let's connect to GitHub. In my case I have a two-step authentication enabled, so I need my login, my username, my password, and I'm gonna need to enter a code that shows on my phone, and this code is only valid a few seconds, so that's what makes that secure. Even though you saw it in the video, that was probably a long time ago, and that code is not valid uh, by the end of the sentence. So now, instead of having the the connect or sign up button, we have a clone and create buttons and sign out. So we're gonna clone. Um, actually, first, you need to fork that to your own repository. So. If you go to github, github.com slash dnn community, this is what holds most of the community modules, including the core modules, which is in this example, we're looking for the announcements module. So you can search for it or scroll down to it. And this is the upstream repository. We want to fork, so the step we're doing here, we are forking it into our own GitHub account. And you just need to click on the fork button. For If you never forked it, it's gonna ask you where you want to fork it. If you have more than one places you can do it. If not, it's gonna just start the, the fork. You're gonna have a little progress bar and then you'll get to your page. I don't see that because I already have it. So now you're gonna see we are on my username slash DNN announcements and that was forked from the DNN community organization DNN announcements. So that's my own copy of that. And we see we have all commits, we have all the branches, it's a full full copy. The only thing that does not carry over are the pull requests and the issues because that's done on the upstream repository. And uh, basically, now that it's forked, we need to clone it to our local machine. And now I'm doing this into Visual Studio, but you could do it also by clicking the clone or download button here, and you could do open it desktop. That would install GitHub desktop which is a standalone GitHub graphical user interface, or you can even do it from the command line because we have GitHub tools installed and that's available in the command line. But I like to do it in Visual Studio. So I'm gonna click clone. I'm gonna select, uh, I'm gonna search for, I have access to four 
different organizations and accounts. So I'm going to search for announcements and that's going to show me all the organizations that have announcements. I don't want to go get the one from the NN community. I want my own copy here. And I'm going to put this, like we said earlier, in the desktop modules folder of a website. So I'm going to go into my C drive, DNN, we have the modules website, and in there we have a desktop modules folder. You don't need to create a folder for that specific module, that's going to be done automatically when cloning. So we're going to hit OK and clone. Depending on the, on the size of what you're cloning, this could take a few seconds to a minute or two, or more if it's a huge project. You're going to see the status on the bottom here. So until that disappears totally, just give it a few seconds so you have everything. While that loads, our website should have loaded. And we are even logged in. So we have our persona bar, everything is there, it's cool. We have version 9.2.1, which is the latest at the time of this recording. Uh, I usually like to create a page on the one where I, I do my uh, modules development. I usually like to have a page called modules, or DNN modules, or just modules. It's a DNN website, so... And I like to have this visible by everybody, so I can test stuff logged in and logged out. That should bring us to our modules page and on the modules page I like to add a page for each of the modules. So this one will be announcements. And I want announcements to be... I think I have to save it first. Or I can select it here. To be a child of the modules page and I want everyone to be able to view it. And if everything went correctly, I have my announcements page inside of my modules page, and this is where I'm going to, I'm going to place the module. So I have an HTML module here, I'm just going to get rid of it. So I have a blank empty page for that. Okay, so our message disappeared, we have success successfully cloned everything, these are the files that are included in this repository. So we're going to open the solution file, 